This is ESBR Boxing. Delighted, as always, to be joined by Elliot Grigg, which you know by now means one thing. We're in preview mode, and we are previewing the huge domestic dust-up at light heavyweight this weekend. Wembley Arena, 12 rounds of action, 175-pound division. Undefeated against undefeated, 17-0 against 20-0. Joshua Boazzi against Dan Aziz. Can't wait for this fight, Elliot. I'm sure you're excited for it as well. We were meant to have it in 2023. Unfortunately, we didn't get it, but we're getting it now. And yeah, I, I'm really, really looking forward to this one. As we like to do now, mate, um, we're not going to go through the records or anything like that. We just like to go in and ask ask the questions that, that need to be answered straight away. So with that in mind, mate, um, after you tell me how you are, my first question for you is, is the winner of Boazzi Aziz the single best light heavyweight in Britain? Oof. Well, firstly, Paul, thank you very much for uh, that introduction and honestly for building the momentum. I was closing my eyes. I can almost feel the arena. It's like we were in the arena and you were giving it the one for the TV audience there. Um, is the winner of this fitness best light heavyweight? You know, for me, it's a tough question in some ways, but I'm actually going to say no to the, is, in answer to this question. Um, I know we'll probably come on to how these guys will fare potentially against other guys in Britain, um, which also may, you know, not necessarily give the answer that supports even this question. But I'm going to say, for me... There's a lack of... Look, but Joshua Boazzi's obviously been a, a prospect for a very, very long time. But neither of these guys... <coughs> sorry. Neither of these guys have a uh, a kind of record to me that would, that would sit them as the best in, in the light heavyweight division. I think, to be honest with you, that record to me would belong to Anthony Yard, even though obviously lost to Baturbi, have lost to Kovalev. And lovely lost to Lyndon Arthur under fairly contentious circumstances. Um, then obviously beating him in the rematch. I still think the fact that he's been in with that calibre of opposition... Um, and equipped himself would probably I'd still probably have him as Britain's best light heavyweight at the moment. But on potential, I mean, these guys, yeah, may may assume that mantle. But I can't I can't say yes given the sort of the the records they've got and the kind of development they've had. Even though there's been a lot of noise behind Boazzi, I still feel you know his best wins against Craig Richards, and I can't say he's Britain's best light heavyweight off the back of that. You know what? I completely concur with everything you've said there. Even the fact that you know the name you mentioned there, Anthony Yard, he's challenged for world honors twice. Then another potential light heavyweight that we've just seen recently in action against um, Baturbiev. Obviously, he was challenging for world honours there and was a former world champion at super middleweight. So I think you've got to have those two higher than both Boatsy and Aziz just on merit of like accomplishments and, and even despite not maybe being a world champion at light heavyweight, either Yard or Smith, they've competed for, for world honours. Yet Boatsy and Aziz are still here fighting for the British and Commonwealth title. It's funny because Boatsy won British title years and years ago against Liam Conroy. And then here he is again fighting for it. You know, when you'd think if you're fighting for the British title like three years ago, purely you're at world level by now. That being said, though, I'd say this is above British and Commonwealth. You know, obviously Aziz is a former European champion. I'd say this is fringe world level, world level fight. And we'll see more in the aftermath. But yeah, mate, I do agree. I don't think um, either Boazzi or Aziz, despite um, both being undefeated, uh, I don't think they have the standout names maybe on the resume to put them up there as the number one or two even um, in the in the division um, domestically. Kind of leads me on and segues into my next question, mate, is you've, you've kind of alluded to it as well. I want to ask just, well, you know what, we'll, we'll, we'll play a bit of a game here. We'll do it quite quickly. No explanations really or anything. We're just going to go in and say, I'm going to give you two, I'm going to name the two fighters and you tell me who wins and how. So, you know, who wins and, and the method of victory, right? So, Boatsy against Anthony Yard. Oh, that's probably the hardest one, to be honest. I can see um, make close fight for me, 50-50. If I had to put money on it, I'd say Yard KO. But also, but Boatsy points wouldn't surprise me. But a very close fight. The closest one, I reckon, I, I, I could come up with out of the British guys. What about Aziz against Yard? Yard KO. Um... Aziz against Lyndon Arthur. Aziz. Maybe points. Boatsy against Callum Smith. Oh. Oh. Um, Callum Smith, I think. Callum Smith. I mean, yeah, Callum Smith. Just. Obviously, we'll leave our Boatsy and Aziz predictions till till later on. But yeah, I thought I'd put you on the spot there. Um, you know what I mean? Mon <laughs> Monday morning, we may as well. Put you on the back foot straight away, but yeah, no, I, I think it's hard to say. I'd agree with the yard to beat Boatsy at this stage, but then again, my opinion might change after the third of February, depending on who wins this fight between Boatsy and Aziz and, and, and who looks who looks the best. 
Yeah. Um, just finally, mate, before we come on to predictions and stuff, obviously, all four belts are tied up at light heavyweight between Dimitri Bivol, who has the WBA title, and uh, Archer Baturbia, of course, who has the other three um, belts. Likely to see that fight in, you know, summertime 2024. But as we, as we know, with these undisputed clashes, it's quite often that the belts become fragmented after that. So my question for you is, mate, do you see a world in which the winner of this fight potentially fights for world honours at the end of 2024, maybe early 2025, should the belts become fragmented after Baturbia of Bivol? Uh, interesting question, but you know, actually, <clears throat> having a look at it, I, I actually do, I do think that's the case, yeah. I think, um, if you look at Boatsy especially, <clears throat> I'm a bit of a cold here, he's... Um, Obviously, very high up in the ranking bodies, essentially of all the all the denomination of, of belts. So, for me, if he does win, he's in a great position to fight fight for a title, even if it becomes fragmented or not fragmented. You know, he could he could essentially be the next in line to fight find those champions. So, I think it'll be him definitely in the mix if he comes through Aziz. I also feel that when it comes to maybe winning a world title, he might have to come through one of those names that you obviously mentioned already, those British names, uh, in order to do so. But I think, yeah, I, th I do honestly think that. The, the winner of this fight will be in a very good position for for a world title shot. Maybe, yeah, to be honest with you, I can see like the timeline you gave, brilliant, late this year, or maybe early 2025. I think they'll be in pole position. Yeah, I, I think I completely agree with what you said there. I think the likelihood is, you know, fingers crossed, touch wood, we do get a turbo of Bivol and some we have an undisputed champion and then you never know, depending on who wins the fight, they're either maybe move up or whatever to cruise away you never know and all of those belts just get relinquished and they're, they're vacant. Then, uh, yeah, I completely agree. I see the winner of this being in a really strong position to fight for a vacant title against either one of the other Brits that we've mentioned, potentially, or, you know, maybe a, a European, mm. American, whatever, um, fighter that we would maybe back them as the, the beat, to be honest with you, as ha sometimes happens with, with vacant titles. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think you're right. I don't think it's the end of the road for the loser here, either, um, personally, but... I do think that the winner is in a really fruitful position um, um, going forward in late 2024, early 2025. I suppose we've kind of kind of left it to now, mate, but I think I think it's prediction time. I um, think that do you know what? I'll I'll I normally put you in the spot first, so we'll flip it around. I'll actually go first, give you yeah, a, an extra thirty seconds to think about it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, what's the disease? I've been quite not vocal, but I've been pretty strong in the opinion that. Despite being in lackluster fights recently and kind of going through the motions, not looking spiteful, I'm very confident Joshua Boati beats Dan Aziz. Um, I think it will likely be on points. And I just think that his class will show. Although, yeah, you look at Aziz and he's got those wins, far more notable wins, may I add, against Jose Burton, Shakan Pitters, you know, Rocky Field and even Reese Cartwright. And then that one, obviously, for the European title against Foray. Boati's best wins are what? Greg Richards and Lotniks, and then that that win against Stepian last time. But he was just going through the gears. For me, he needs to be more spiteful. But I think he'll be switched on this fight, and I expect Boatsy to win. I'm leaning towards points. What about yourself? You know what, Paul? I see. I can't even. I can't. There's no discord in this in this prediction. I think. Um, I think Dan Aziz is a very durable fighter. So, if you're honest with you, I don't think Boatsy will, will stop him. But I do think that Boatsy is. Better technically than Dan Aziz, frankly. Um, I think he'll just he'll be able to outbox him fairly comfortably. Um, so yeah, I see I see this as being like like you said as well, like not necessarily had that marquee name on his record, Boatsy, but equally it's kind of been within himself a little bit in certain fights as well. I just see I see a unanimous decision victory for for Josh Boatsy, to be perfectly honest with you. Well, we're in agreement for the for the first video this weekend. Obviously, we've got another preview that we've done on the channel, Connor Ben in action um over in the States this weekend as well. So yeah, we're in agreement. Do you do you agree, guys? Watching, do you think Joshua Boatze maybe just a little too good for Dan Aziz, or are you going with Dan Aziz? I know at ASBR we're pretty split. I think a lot of people actually fancy Dan Aziz to win this fight. So yeah, it's an interesting one. Let us know your thoughts as always, guys. And Elliot, really, really enjoyed that with you, with your mate. Uh, thanks very much for joining me, and I'll speak to you again soon. Thank you very much, Paul. Speak to you soon, and as always, guys, thank you very much for watching.